I remember making a joke a couple of weeks ago, but a very serious point that you can't say you love Jesus and not love his bride, which is what he calls the church. And our connection and our relationship, our priority and commitment to the church is really a great reflection of our commitment and surrender to Jesus. Uh, we started out the series about three weeks ago of, uh, of uh, Jesus using this word church in a way that had never been used before, that it became this brand new meaning. It was uh, originally just generically a set apart, called out, assembled group. They were set apart, they were different, and they were called out for different areas of society. But Jesus took that word ecclesia, the word we use as church, and it became this brand new point of the kingdom, uh, of a family of a greater priority that we are part of a new nation, a new people group, a new kingdom uh, that is different than anything else this world has. That's why the church is unique. There's nothing like it. That's why there's so many analogies for what the church is in the Bible uh, because there's not one analogy to completely describe what the church is. And so uh, we looked at two weeks ago that Jesus said upon this rock who he was and on the confession that he was the Messiah, the son of the living God, he said, I will build my church. So ownership there. We see that all through Scripture. And he says, even the gates of hell won't prevail against it. And so the greatest thing you can be a part of is part of the church. But the reality is you can't be a part of the church until you're a part of Christ. And then being a part of the church goes hand in hand and it's woven together. It's essential for the life of a believer. And so he gave us that statement that he will build his church and it is his church and nothing is going to come against it. Last week, we took a little different approach as we talked about this point of uh, marriage and of husbands and wives. And we actually looked at a passage in, in Ephesians chapter 5, and most people see it, and appropriately so, as great application for how you can be a husband like Jesus, or how you as a wife can be a, a good wife, a great wife like the church is supposed to be. Uh, and, and the point of it was it really wasn't ultimately about husbands and wives. It was ultimately about Jesus and his church. That's what he was really talking about. We looked at all through history throughout the Bible of, of Adam, who was to be that good husband who really messed up. He was supposed to protect and guard his wife, Eve, and how that didn't work out. But God was sending someone greater than Adam, the second Adam, the perfect Adam, uh, to be able to rescue and redeem and be committed to this new wife. And this wife is now those who are in Christ, who have trusted Jesus as their Savior. And so we've looked at this combination of how much Jesus loved the church. Have you thought about how much Jesus loves the church? He loved the church so much that he gave up his own life. He laid down his own life for the church, and that's how much he loves it. And also, should we love the church any less? Not because it's perfect, because they and we are not. The church is imperfect, even though Jesus is perfect. And so today, we have this unique opportunity that we come together, actually, the first Sunday of every month, where we always celebrate the Lord's Supper, uh, because it's so important in the life of the church, and we'll talk about that more in a moment. But today, we actually get to celebrate what I call the three ordinances of the church that is required for the church. Some of you may say, hey, I thought there was only two ordinances of the church. Well, I want to share with you all three that I believe are great, clear priorities from Scripture. Uh, the first priority of the church, of God's people that are set apart, is what was that other part? They must be assembled. Uh, and so I believe the first ordinance of the church is to gather together. We need to gather together on a regular basis. We need to be together to be reminded of what we have in Christ and where he has taken us. And so we want to gather. That's the, the first point. The second one is we want to understand what baptism is in regards to the church. Uh, and then we also want to understand as we receive also the Lord's Supper. So we'll have object lessons in both services for baptisms, and we'll also remember the Lord's Supper. Do you know that you probably, if you're a good old individualized American, uh, you probably think of each of these points that we're talking about today as about you or between you and God. And in some regards, that is correct. When you gather together on a Sunday morning, when you gather together in a discipleship or Bible study, but specifically on the Lord's Day, for this great priority, uh, you think of it, most people do, as between you and God, and that is rightfully so. But I want to push back on your thinking in a more biblical way that this gathering this morning is not just about you and God, but it's about you if you are in Christ and have committed to a local church, that it's about you and the people that God has placed with you. Because gathering is an essential and it's also a desire for those who are true believers. 
It reminds you, it reminds me, when I come together with you on Sunday morning, it reminds me that I am one, but I become part of many people who are also one. Let me unpack that a little more. In just a few minutes, we're going to have a sweet sister and friend come up to be baptized. And great story of her life. I'll share a little bit more when she comes up to get baptized. But usually, if you think of you being baptized, if you were baptized, if you've been obedient after salvation, and when you watch a baptism taking place, what do you think of? You think of that as, uh, sometimes some people think of as a ritual, which it's not a ritual. It's actually a sacred symbol of what it represents with you coming to Christ. But some people think about it that it's between just about you and God, about you and Jesus when you get baptized. Uh, But can I push back on that as well, as we think of how much Jesus loved the church, that when you were baptized or when you get baptized, it's actually you, the one, being initiated and becoming part of the many. Don't miss the gravity of that, my friends, that when you get baptized, it's not just between you and Jesus. While ultimately it's your symbolic relationship and this marriage, this covenant between you and Jesus of the outward symbol of it, but it's actually a part of you, the one, me, the one, becoming a part of the many. All right? Now let me take that one step farther. In just a few moments after the baptism today, we're going to receive the Lord's Supper. And you know what the Lord's Supper is? Most people, and rightfully so, to a certain extent, but we got to make sure we understand the bigger picture. When we receive the Lord's Supper, if you're in Christ, if you don't know Jesus personally as your Savior, you shouldn't come to the Lord's Supper table. It's very clear. But if you come to receive the Lord's Supper, you think of it as something between you and God. And rightfully so. It is between you and God. It's a point of reflection, of inventory, of being reminded of what Jesus did for you. But you know what the bigger point of it is? That when you come to receive the Lord's Supper, while we, as I say, every time we take it, everybody has their individual little piece of bread. Everyone has their little cup of juice. And you go back and you take it. When do we take it? Do we all take it separately or randomly? No. Uh, We have the symbol here that uh, I'll even show now that's this loaf of bread, that while we all have our individual pieces of bread, the other part of it is we're all one loaf and we take it together at the same time. And it's a reminder when we take the Lord's Supper that the many ones are reminded that we're a part of one. Does that make sense? We're reminded that when we take the Lord's Supper, that while each of us have our little cups of juice and our little pieces of bread that's a very powerful symbol, it's a reminder that you and I in Christ are one body. It's a reminder of how much Jesus loved the church. So the next time you think about gathering on a Sunday... Don't think about it, just you and God. Oh, it is so much greater than that, that you are reminded that you're part of the many. That when uh, you see somebody get baptized or when you become obedient in baptism after your salvation, that you are actually not only being baptized into Christ, but you're now being baptized into the many, the local community of believers that is set apart for God. And when you take the Lord's Supper, you realize then and be reminded that once again, the many of us are one in Jesus.